This is a quick tutorial for building basic multiplayer side scroller space shooter in Unity using Photon Pantheon. For now, we will only go over the basics no crazy AI, damage, or progression system. Just what you see in this demo. So, if this sounds like something you would enjoy, keep watching. Start by adding a raw image to the scene, which will be the space background, and make it fill the entire canvas. Go to the seamless space texture file and set it to sprite 2D and UI, and wrap mode to repeat. And drag it on the raw image object in the inspector. Now moving the UV rect X parameter will move the texture. Set it back to zero and create the side scroller script. We need a variable to control the scrolling speed. Cache the raw image component. And in the update, we move rect X position by using the vector 2.write multiplied by the scroll speed and delta time. Now let's duplicate the space image, name it star field and assign the texture. Now for the parallax effect, change the speed to be slightly faster than the one set for the background texture. In the hierarchy, turn off the background image to make sure the star field texture transparency is working properly. You should be able to see the camera's background color, which doesn't matter because it will be overlaid by the space background texture that doesn't have an alpha transparency channel. Drag the spaceship sprite into the scene and set the canvas render mode to screen space camera and assign the camera object to the render camera field. Create an empty object to inherit the parent's position. Drag it out and move the player's sprite back in to keep the parent's transform rotations and logic separate from the visuals. If you are using this sprite rotated by 90 degrees on the Z axis, drag the player's object to the project files to create a prefab. For the thrusters animation, select all the sprites and drag them to the scene. And set the starting sprite to adjust the rotation in the scene view. I'm creating a parent transfer here to make it easier to add another thruster so they would both inherit the parent's position and rotation. Now for the input, go to the package manager, select Unity Registry from the drop down menu and install the input system. Switch back to C packages in the project, expand the samples and import the simple demo. This should add the simple controls asset to your project, which should be enough for our movement and firing. If you're adding any actions, make sure to save them before closing, or have the autosave option enabled. Select the player's object and add Unity's player input component, and assign the simple controls asset to it. Create the player's movement script and open it. First, we need a reference to the movement vector, and we'll call it left stick, which will also work with the keyboard. Add a float for the speed. Read the input values in update and use them to move the player's transform if the input exceeds a hard-coded sensitivity threshold of 0.1. Back in Unity, assign the left stick input reference and run the game to test. Let's make a thrust activator script that will activate the thrusters only when the player is moving forward. We will borrow the input part from the player's movement script and check if the x value is greater than 0.1. If so, we enable the thruster's parent object. Assign the input action reference and the thruster's parent object. You should only see the thrusters while moving in the x positive direction. Now let's restrict the player's movement within the screen boundaries. Create a vector 2 to store the screen bounds and two floats for the player's sprite dimensions. In late update, clamp the player's position to stay within the screen bounds plus or minus the player's width and height depending on which side of the screen it is on. Back in Unity, don't forget to assign the player's sprite 